Now at 6 o'clock, temperatures are dropping across the Commonwealth and homeless shelters say they're at capacity. A full report coming up. A fire destroys a Madison County barn. The devastated owner tells us what she's lost. And classes at UK are starting up again next week and University Health Services says they're preparing for an influx of flu cases. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us on this cold Saturday. I'm Whitney Wetzel. And I'm Mark Barber. Waking up to single digit temperatures out there today. Yeah, for what is it now, the second or third day in a row? It seems like it's been too long, that's for sure. It certainly feels like the fourth or fifth day to some, I'm sure. But we'll check in with WKYT's Mike Linden to see how long this cold snap will continue. Well, good morning, Mark and Whitney. It looks like the cold weather is going to continue. Well, it is the winter, so through the rest of the season. But as far as this bitter cold goes, it looks like today, especially so this morning, might be the end of it, especially when you consider the mid 30s relief the next few days. But here's a look at your current wind chill single digits, or at least that's what it feels like, with most spots only a few degrees up from what you're seeing right there on the current wind chill. Now, as we look toward our conditions outside, well, there's really not much cloud cover and not really much of anything else going on today. So it's should be a nice looking Saturday, but maybe not the best feeling one. 22 degrees for the high today, staying relatively sunny, but big changes are on the way late in the weekend. I'll show you what I'm tracking into the work week next week coming up. All right, Mike, thank you. Temperatures are hitting the single digits across the Commonwealth, like Mike just said, and area homeless shelters say they're either at or over capacity. So when the rescue mission in Lexington had to close its doors last week, it could have spelled disaster. Fortunately, many in the community have stepped up and donations have been pouring in, so the center will reopen soon. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is at the rescue mission with the latest. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning, Mark and Whitney. With temperatures set to stay below freezing today, organizers here at the Lexington Rescue Mission are thankful that due to donations, they will reopen soon after a broken pipe forced them to close. It was bad timing for the organization that helps hundreds in the area, especially during a cold snap like we are seeing. With all area shelters and missions at capacity, all organizations are greatly needed. The Lexington Rescue Mission provides a variety of services, including warm meals and providing coats, gloves, blankets, and other basic needs. However, when a sewage pipe broke, the rescue mission was the one in need, with repairs costing $15,000. Now, on Friday, the organization learned enough donors have come forward to cover the cost. Organizers say repairs will start as soon as tomorrow, and they plan to reopen next Saturday. Reporting live in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Now to a developing story that we've been tracking out of San Francisco. Police say four people are dead there after an overnight shooting. A spokesperson for San Francisco police says the shooting happened around 10 o'clock last night, which is 1 o'clock Eastern time. No arrests have been made and details are still very limited at this point. We'll continue to bring you updates as, be, as they become available on WKYT this morning and on our website, WKYT.com. Now, firefighters in Richmond braved the flames and the bitter cold as they fought a barn fire last night. Yeah, that fire was so big that some witnesses described what they thought were explosions. This is an eyewitness photo that was sent in to us before firefighters could put out that fire. The owner of the barn says she stepped out on her front porch and started hearing explosions. We're told four baby cows died in that fire. There was also a truck in there and a horse trailer full of furniture for her daughter and son-in-law who were in the process of moving. The homeowner says now she has to take stock of what's been lost. Well, we're going to sit down and make a list of all the things. We do have good insurance, thanks to Farm Bureau, I hope, and um, try to start piecing back together. The Madison County Fire Department says they don't know what caused that fire. Well, it is going to be a busy week next week for shelters housing people during this extreme cold. Many have been filled to capacity or beyond this week in order to find extra places for those in need. For almost five years, the Arlington Christian Church has welcomed those who don't have a place to stay during these frigid winter months. The church plans to sleep 15 men from the Hope Center tomorrow through next Thursday. How you do what you can to help who you can, when you can, and how you can. You know, it's just a matter of uh, taking care of one another. Bowman says the church gets between 10 and 15 men from the Hope Center every night. 
And starting Monday, the Community Action Council will begin the Low Income House Energy Assistance Program. Last year, the Community Action Council helped 12,000 Central Kentuckians pay their heating bills. Because we have seen days and days of bone chilling cold, they expect to help a lot of people again this year. The group tells us they have more than a million dollars to help people in need pay their heating bills. Well, what we do know is based on the cold temperatures that we've seen this week, uh, that on January the 12th, we'll have lots of folks come out from the community that we serve who are going to need assistance with their uh, heating bills. Uh, we know that our low income families pay a high proportion of their income towards their electric bills and heating bills. Now, program signups begin at 8.30 this morning. We have more information on our website, wkyt.com.